How Valve is profiting from Steam's backdoor casino. People told me to watch this, but I don't know. Speaking to CSGO problem gamblers? Yeah, we're watching this. People make games investigation into gaming giant Valve. Owners of monolithic PC game marketplace Steam. Look at the rating, bro. We'll Hello, welcome. and welcome to part one of a two-part um, People Make Games investigation mama. into gaming giant Valve. Owners of... If it's boring, we skip. ...monolithic PC game marketplace theme, and makers of games, sometimes. For the last few months, I've been researching the colourful yet frightening world of online casinos that plug into your Steam account. Since these sites first appeared 10 aye, years aye, ago, aye. they've allowed Steam users to gamble tens of billions of dollars in the form of skins, cryptocurrency, and hard cash. Websites that are at best sketchy and at worst predatory, with no way to tell if the odds they're offering you are fair, hitting you with fees when you try and withdraw your winnings, marking themselves to Steam users way below the age of 18, and showing little to no interest on whether you might be addicted. In this video, we're going to show you how these sites first appeared. And not only how this is also like important for me. I love hearing people's takes because for me personally, you may disagree with this. That's why I'm also interested to hear your guys' opinion and his opinion. For me, it's a different thing to open cases in CSGO itself and on outside like third party case opening sites, which are offshore, which you don't know who owns its company like that. That is probably money laundering that is doing this. That is. Uh, there's been so many scams and everything like you know there's an like just a gambling empire sassy gambling empire that's trying to funnel in people by sponsoring people or your open case in game the game that gave me everything that's why i sometimes open cases right i i don't feel bad supporting the game in that way it gave me everything and it's not trying to keep you locked in if that makes sense sure I feel like maybe the ratatatata, you being able to get baited, that's kind of f***ed up. Like if a young person opens a case and he gets baited by a rat, I could see that some connections <laughs> may be made in that person's brain, which is f***. But there's f***ing, what is it, third-party case opening sites that have like, back to school event, get now 50% off your cases, use 10% uh, discount bonus for this, uh, open 10 cases today and you will get extra points, uh, do this, cash back this, like, you know? I don't know. I feel like there is a big difference, but still, both on paper are bad. Valve failed to shut them down, but continues to inspire them. And we're going to be showing clips from interviews we conducted with users of these sites, wow. gambling psychologists, and ex-Valve employees. Wow! And then we're going to explain how one reason that Valve never successfully shut this casino industry down could be because they're profiting from it. However, I said this was part one of a two-part series. While conducting these interviews with ex-Valve employees, we realized that despite Valve being one of the most wealthy and influential companies in the games industry, it's also one of the most mysterious. And so, we reached out to a lot more people who've worked at Valve over the years. And the next video that People Make Games will be releasing will be a pulling back of the curtain on the fascinating way this company operates. Seriously. Huh? How did we not watch this yet? Is my chat stupid? Do you only watch TikTok and you don't see documentaries like this? What's going on? How did we not watch this yet? I, 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 somebody linked it once, that's it. It's wild. But for today, let's talk about Valve's gambling problem. Let's see it. So, this is a report on how Valve enables a whole industry of shady casinos. But to start this story, we have to wind the clock way back to 2010, when Valve first put loot boxes in their games Team Fortress 2, Dota 2, and Counter-Strike Global Offensive. Still today, the two most popular games on Steam by a huge margin. Because this is when Valve's relationship to gambling began. So today, the games industry is doing a lot of really good thinking about whether certain business models might be unethical or exploitative. I'm thinking here about gacha games like Genshin Impact, as well as truly chilling products like Diablo Immortal. And in the context of these thoughtful discussions, we can look back at Valve's 2012 era loot box design and immediately see it's a little bit scandalous. So as you're playing any of these Valve games, you're gonna receive crates that you can pop open for a random cosmetic reward. There's just one catch. You can't open any crate without a key and keys can only be bought from Valve at $2.50. 
depths of Valve give you this crate to make you feel like you've won something, but you haven't actually won anything. You've won the opportunity to pay Valve $2.50. I never thought about that, bro. If somebody gets dropped the case, it's like, it is kind of shouting like, open me, open me, no? You get crates dropped. I, I, I never thought about it from this perspective. If like a 15 year old gets dropped the case, it's like, you know, you do want to open it. If you open a crate in CSGO, you and your new emotional investment that comes from your $2.50 sunk cost will then see a spinning slot showing everything you might win before you get your skin. Bro! <laughs> Bro. Nah. Is that true? A slot. This might seem like a harmless visualizer making the unboxing more fun and theatrical. It is not. There's a reason that the casino websites we're looking at in this video use it as well, and why casinos in America today make between 65% and 80% of their revenue from slot machines. The visualizer shows what you could have won, ah, oh, and how close you came to winning. That's not true. What you win from a crate is decided before the animation starts playing. Ah, oh, I almost won a gold skin. You didn't. They're f***ing with you. <laughs> <laughs> I love getting baited, bro. I mean, oh man, is that true? No, I'm trolling, of course. Of course, I mean it. I mean it is. Ay, 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 ay. Barely makes Valve's loot boxes ethically squicky is how the skins you win can be traded on the Steam Marketplace. Launched in 2012, the Steam Marketplace allows Steam users to trade, buy, and sell items in their Steam inventory, with Valve taking 5% of each sale, though this rises to 10% when trading items from Valve's own games. So, when you open a loot box in a Valve game, that item you win has a cash value. You're not just winning a skin for your AK-47, you are functionally receiving 5 bucks, or 50 bucks, or 500 bucks. There are skins in CSGO- Or 1.5 million dollars on the Karambit case, Sudden Pattern X 387 in factory new condition, wow. Oh, that are so rare, they have sold for almost 100,000 dollars. Functionally, Valve- Rookie numbers. Since then, four months ago, no, even before that, I guess you just didn't know about it, but the skins that sold for much more than that now, much more, 200,000, uh, uh, like crazy. Mm -mm. Those loot boxes are scratch cards with a cash prize that also happen to function as video game skins. Now, Technically, when you open one of Valve's loot boxes, you're not receiving cash money because if you sell this stuff on the marketplace, you're receiving Steam wallet funds, which you cannot take off your Steam account. But for as long as there has been a Steam marketplace, there has been a grey market hey! official Steam market! Mwah! Exclamation mark Steam market, you already know. Uh oh, and before we trash talk Steam market, let's hear it. Sites that Valve still today let plug into Steam's API. Steam users can link their Steam accounts to these sites, and by selling your skins here, you can in fact sell that skin you want in a loot box for cash. And these sites are at a 3% fee. It is what it is. That's pretty cheap. In no way difficult to find. While researching this story, I started seeing ads for them everywhere. What's that? On side here, this way you can take stuff you've won in Valve games and sell it on the open market means that Valve kind of invented the video game NFT back in 2012, just without any blockchain technology True. at all. And it works fine, you know, in case you needed any more evidence that NFTs are a brain-dead, environmentally wasteful initiative that was invented as a case use for cryptocurrency. Anyway, Valve launched all of this stuff, and unlike NFTs, it had an immediate and lasting appeal. Prior to Valve adding these loot boxes to CSGO, the game had an average of 25,000 people playing it at any one time. But two years after this famous arms dealer update, it had almost 14 times that. Today, as I say, it is the most popular game on Steam. But these trading websites weren't the only new small businesses to plug in to Steam's API. People also began launching oh, yeah. simple gambling websites, letting people wager their skins against one another in a winner-takes-all scenario. LOL! Bet them on Slay the Minotaur! This guy- what the f This guy's the owner of ITB. Like, this guy helped me get a uh, NordVPN deal back in the day. <laughs> My first sponsor, he got it. <laughs> Slay the Minotaur! Smuya redirected me to him. Lul, he's in the chat. <laughs> upcoming eSports <laughs> matches. Essentially, living players use the skins in their Steam account as chips in a casino. And if you won, you'd receive even more skins. And the really important bug slash feature of these sites is because you don't need a bank account or a credit card to play, you just need a Steam account, these sites have little to no safeguards to keep underage gamblers out. And arguably, huh? no interest- 
But they have to check that they're 18. What is he talking about? You can't click it if you're like, it's the same with, like you can't get, you can't get past this, I think, no? In doing so, because to the best of my knowledge, it's not like there's a police- Unless you lie, but bro, come on, man. Like on the internet, you're crazy, bro. You'll get straight to jail, no? Police agency anywhere in the world looking into this. And so these sites became, and are still today, havens for underage gambling. True. While researching this video, I tested this by pretending to be 13 years old. I made a new Steam account, and after my dad made me a purchase on Steam, and I enabled Steam Guard and waited 15 days, I was then able to access the Steam Marketplace. And once I had that, I connected my Steam account to one of these gambling websites and was able to bet my skins and withdraw my winnings, and my dad had no idea. Mm -hmm. While gambling on these sites, a couple of things became apparent. First off, these sites are fun. It is fun to play games of chance and often receive skins that are cool or expensive or sometimes both. And even when you receive skins you don't like, that's kind of fun too because that's like a cheeky invitation from these sites to just have another bet. You can take those I hate these sites so much, bro. I hate these sites so much, man. <sighs> bro, I wish they were banned on Twitch, man. They banned gambling, but why not this, bro? This is even worse. Is it not? This is like it's CSGO. It's so much more accessible as well for like, you know, the problem is with slots on Twitch. That it's like tailoring to a young audience. Yeah, bro, look at this. Look at this. Crap skins you won and stake them in additional bets. However, um, I also became aware of a real darkness to these sites because they make it absolutely frictionless to lose a lot of money really quickly because at no point do you feel like you're playing with real money you're just swapping skins for skins you're spinning Bro, not just that some of these sites like some of you probably use these sites oh, as well right they're so everywhere everybody's um, sponsored by them i still trade true to, true to myself didn't do it if you like play on this site like any of these sites i've seen it like with multiple you play right and then you stop playing for like a couple of days first of all they always have things like welcome back rewards daily streaks Right? Like, hey, you, you play tomorrow again and you, you get this for free. Bro, you stop playing for a little bit. They comment on your Steam profile. No, sorry. They it's comment probably as well. But they send you a trade offer with like a 80 cent skin and say like, hey, don't you want to come back? And then they send you a free skin that's like, uh, like welcome back gift. Bro, you, what? What? They're like hunting you down after you played on it. Wheels that give you things that then encourage you to spin more wheels. And yet, even placing almost the smallest possible bets I could, I blew through $20 of credit in under 10 minutes. And worse, my instinctive response when this happened was, well, I'll just put another $20 in. And I don't even play CSGO. To gain the losses back, it makes sense. I was keen to acquire cool skins, even though I was never going to use them in the game, which is demented. I can only imagine how much more- um. Snacktoast, Black John, Flatro, Poker, Anon. Bro, who would want to put their face in this? I don't get it, man. These sites pay this much? I mean, I guess, I don't know. More addictive these sites would be if I actually played this game. Now, I think when these sites first started appearing, at least some games publishers would have seen an unlicensed all-ages betting industry growing on the underside of their video game like aggressive mold on a piece of fruit and said, I think maybe we should stop this. But in the years that followed, Valve did next to- We don't to know, you know. I've heard, what was it? I think if you have like, I, I don't know how much they would pay me or whatever, but I've heard, what was it? If you have like 700 viewers or something, which is a lot for CSGO, per hour that you play on it, right? And you can basically play like as much as you want. And then they pay you per hour, 1,500. But then probably refer more and you get like, of course the money that you play on it is for free as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, uh, like, uh, I think it will go much higher than that. I don't know, because I feel like that was just like an entry deal or something. I've, and, uh, guys, like for example, Zippel or whatever, He's, he's got offers like for a year long, just putting the sponsor on and everything for like six digits, uh, sometimes even scratching a higher mark than that. Bro, like uh, it's more than that. It's uh, 1,500 per hour is, is probably on the low end. Like I think. Nothing. And by 2015, this quasi legal industry had grown to the point that it had started making headlines. Valve announced in January 2015 that they were banning seven professional CSGO players for match fixing. 
deliberately playing badly so that people could win money betting against them on the betting site csgolounge.com. A site so popular that in 2015 oh there were more Google searches than there were for the leading online poker site. That One semi-professional CSGO player that people make games spoke to for this video said that match fixing doesn't just still happen in CSGO, it's an open secret. Yeah, there is so much of it. I know people who have done it. I've played against people who have done it. It's so common nowadays still. On a related note, CSGOLounge.com is... Mostly though in tier two, tier three, right? In the lower leagues and everything, if they still make it to the betting sites, but there's not much on the line, like it's probably not gonna happen in tier one or whatever. I would assume, I don't know. Still online today and still taking your bets. But this is just one site. There were, and still are, tons of these sites. There aren't many professional estimates of the total size of the skin betting industry, but in 2016, one gambling research firm predicted that just that year, it would take over $4 billion worth of bets. We weren't able to see their methodology, but even if you take that number with a pinch of salt, that's a wild amount of money to be passing through these sites. That's insane. Especially when you consider that unlike most physical casinos, there is no governing body to make sure they're operating in a way that is fair or legal. And the marketing that these sites use is particularly gross. They enter agreements with streamers on YouTube or Twitch. Oh, this face, bro. The scumbag face of Twitch. Who then go and gamble on these sites without always telling their audience that they, the streamer, are getting something out of this. Inevitably, the streamer has a great time and probably wins big, so some fraction of their audience then visits these sites to go and try out this whole gambling thing. The news and scandals swirling around these sites reached a peak in the summer of 2016 when news broke Oh, it's of crazy a to me. Like, I'm not talking about any of the examples, but like those people are still around and you know, and it's just, it feels like they just, just took like no hit or anything, bro. It's, it's, it's even more demotivating declining these deals because it's like, it feels like, I feel like I always think like, oh yeah, my community, maybe they appreciate if I don't take this or that. And it's like uh, all these other people, it's like, boom, it, I don't know. It makes it so like, I don't know, where it's uh, even more harder sometimes. We do, bro. Ah, I feel like it doesn't really matter. Like, not even kidding. Mm -mm. Breathtakingly galling scheme from a couple of streamers, Tom Syndicate Castle from England and Trevor T. Martin Martin from the US. The two began releasing videos where they gambled on a site called CSGO Lotto, which they made seem so fun and cool to the 10 million subscribers they had between them. Literally millions of whom must have been kids. Sure, we don't usually allow kids to gamble because society deems them unable to make serious financial decisions or recognize addiction, but these are just video game skins, right? It's just a video game? Then an Indian YouTuber called Honor the Call checked CSGO oh Lotto's God. articles of incorporation and it turned out that team- Honor the Call, bro, that was a time to be alive. Wow. I was at the edge of my screen, like when Honor the Call dropped a new video. Every Martin time. and Syndicate were the president and vice president of CSGO Lotto. And the reason they kept Remember, winning- Remember, you always recorded the videos of like on Call of Duty uh, Black Ops or something. You always played Nuketown. <laughs> that was like, Mart T. Martin did this, this, and like a uh, Nuketown guy playing in the back. <laughs> Classic. It was because they'd rigged the games and all the excited shouting they were doing was acting. T. Martin and Syndicate were charged with several civil Scumbags. lawsuits for, you know, embarking on an unlabeled advertising campaign in which they tried to shuttle millions of impressionable teens into a casino that they secretly owned. But by 2017, it is my great displeasure to tell you that the pair's lawyer had gotten all of these lawsuits dismissed, using an argument that's altogether too depressing for me to get into here, but it involved the restaurant chain McDonald's. But T. Martin and... I don't know about this. ...argument that's altogether too depressing for... Once... But Watson said there was always a way for people to get those tickets for free. Watson said that means CSGO Lotto was as much as a gambling website as McDonald's is a casino. Huh? Once a year or so, McDonald's runs the famous you're Monopoly themed game on every package of fries. <laughs> Bro, what? The trick is that if you're in McDonald's and you look at the display, it says you don't have to buy any fries or coke to play the game. You just have to walk up to the counter and ask for a ticket. Then you mail it in and there. For me to get into here, but it involved the restaurant chain McDonald's. But T. Martin and Syndicate weren't the only streamers to get busted. Around this time, James Phantom Lord Varga, the world's seventh biggest streamer at the time, turned out to own a stake in CSGO Shuffle. Streamer Psy Syndicate was found to be working on rigged games with a site called Steam Lotto. And CSGO Diamonds was found to be cooperating with streamer Mo Assad.
I remember that guy. I fully forgot about this guy, but now it made like click. The f I watched this guy as well, bro. I watched those videos. But I was a clueless kid. I was uh, I was watching all of the man. I'm not even kidding. I was watching Phantom not doing trade ups in Cisco Shuffle times. Jesus. And CSGO Diamonds. I feel so stupid now. I feel so dumb, bro. To be cooperating with streamer Mo Assad. It makes me think. Like I can see as well now. Like I don't know why people would watch now people doing it right to me it's like i don't know to me it's like now like what the f it's, f it's f they're getting paid the money doesn't mean to them it's all f acting nobody f cares bro if you see somebody open a f case it doesn't f matter they can just ask for a refill it doesn't f matter it's, bro like i don't understand how people i mean i do understand now how people f watch it this is probably f young <laughs> Kuru, look at what just happened! At the time, Polygon reported that Assad's severance when he stopped working with CSGO Diamonds was more than 170 Bitcoin. Then, worth around $100,000, today, worth more than 3 million! These are just the streamers who got caught during the summer that everyone's attention was on this industry. By the summer of 2016, the scandals were so bad that Valve finally steamrolled into action, issuing all these sites with legal threats to shut down their operations. Oh. Now, in my humble opinion, that should have been the end of the story. Valve finally wake up and realize they can't let loot in their video game also function as casino chips. But unfortunately, that's just when the games industry stopped paying attention to this story yep. because it seemed like it was over. But in the years that followed, while there have been occasional news stories about Valve taking further action against certain sites, in truth, these stories represent Valve fighting occasional battles while losing the war. Today, not only are the sites still active, they're more advanced and feature rich than ever. Just some of the more popular ones today include CSGO Roll, CSGO Empire, CSGO Fast, CSGO Polygon, Skin.Club, which claims more than 3 million users, and Key-Drop.com, which claims almost 9, huh? 9 million users who've made, huh? made some 200 million bets. People Make Games was also told by the CSGO trading community that it's impossible to grasp the scale of this industry if you're only looking at the English language internet, as streamers all over the world are playing on these sites in front of their audiences. One thing that is clear though, is just how far these sites have advanced since 2016. Not only have lots of them grown into this busy, colourful, teenage aesthetic that is clearly aimed at young people. Yeah, I remember. Do I have the picture somewhere, bro? It was literally... Back to school event. <laughs> Lots of them have loyalty reward schemes and mini games like you find in mobile games. And some areas of the casino are branded tie-ins with YouTubers. People Make Games reached out to seven of the most popular skin betting sites to ask for an interview. We didn't receive a reply from any of them. Although, Keydrop.com did have a listed address in central London, so we paid them a visit. Yes! Only to find that the building is actually a front. It's an office. Oh, okay. I mean, obvious, obvious with a hyper-respectable address that you can pay money to for the appearance of having a classy location when actually you're renting the world's most expensive post office box. Right. I did feel kind of bad for the receptionist as we burst in all aggressive, cameras rolling, but the funny thing is, really didn't seem like the first time this had happened to her. Okay, all right, no. okay, uh, that's all from us. Thank you very, very much. But while we weren't able to speak to these businesses, People May Games did put word out that we wanted to speak to the users of these casino websites. And during these calls, it was made crystal clear to us that these sites are hurting the players of Valve's games. I just remember being a couple of months into the game and I was already like, you know, asking my parents, oh, can I get 20 bucks, like a Steam car or whatever? That's how it uh, started when I was 14. I was uh, 14 years old. I was about 13 or 14 at the time. If you level up, you get a random skin dropped in game. So we'd like try and bet those on the matches. And then it just kind of progressed from there. I was watching YouTube videos and I saw a sponsored video of somebody turning, I think it was $500 into like 2000 like, yo. And then I had a knife that my dad bought me for my birthdays. I Nine. put it in and I actually ended up winning somehow. I turned the $50 knife to like 200 bucks. Like, yo. Probably my first experience gambling would have been on CSGO Lounge. If you were like a Counter-Strike fan, like that was what the Counter-Strike fans did. Watching these games, like you could tell the people cheering the most, like they probably had some money on it. There was never an idea or never a kind of perception of, oh, you shouldn't bet on matches because you're underage. I think it was so well integrated into the community 
it almost felt like there's no problem at all doing this. It's just CSGO. It wasn't gambling, it was just getting better skins. I would definitely describe the way that I was in middle school gambling on these Counter-Strike sites as addicted for sure. Like there was definitely a time at a, at a summer camp that I was at where I was like the gambling ringleader and I got a bunch of other kids to kick in 50 bucks. And like, it was really fun when we won and then it was all gone very quickly. So I had about a hundred pounds worth of skins and I traded it in for one knife and I put it on the website, you know, obviously stressed out. It's Christmas Eve, actually. I was doing this on Christmas Eve, I see here. Yep, trying to get a Christmas present. No. And I put it on the website, builds up to 200. Then I go in again, builds up to 500. I go in again. I'm, I'm you know, over the moon. All these skins were worth about two, two and a half thousand euros. I remember that number very distinctly because I went in again, of course, there's no protections on these sites. Now, what I did then, it shows that I was into it way too much because I lost the bet, I had maybe 30, 40 pounds left of things that I didn't put in. I immediately went in again. Basically, after losing $100, I just took my bicycle, drove to the next gas station, bought one or two hundred dollar peso cards, went back home, gambled them again. My grade 11 math class. Bro, pay safe cards. <laughs> Chat, I as well as a... Bro, when I was super young, I was playing like League of Legends and some other games I was playing. Oh my God. Bro, full nostalgia for me. Battlefield Heroes. And I also as well, like for me, I always used pay safe cards as well to put in money into a game. <laughs> I was always pay safe cards. <laughs> Go to the gas station, always drove with my bicycle, went with like 10 bucks and then pay safe card. You always had a code and then you entered it. <laughs> Well, those were the times, man. I mean, it wasn't gambling or anything. It was just like you bought a skin or something for a tenner. I remember doing coin flips for like 50 to to $100 on my phone during like a lecture. Jesus. Like even when I was in high school, I was like, this could just become like a life ruining addiction. It, I absolutely not should not have had access to something like that. Like in hindsight, it's very easy for me to say that. And it's very easy for me to realize like that could have gone wrong. Like it did go wrong. I still gamble to this day and it definitely like seeded something in me that has not like gone away. When you're in middle school, you know what I mean? And you just won 1500 bucks, like that dopamine hit. It's impossible to just like turn, to just like shut that off. You lose all your money in CSGO lounge or a 15 year old gambling. You're not gonna just be like, all right, I'm done for the night. You're gonna be like, okay, how do I make another run at it? But it could have gone wrong in a, in a life altering way. And I'm lucky that it didn't. I thought, let's see what else there is to gamble on. So yeah, then I went into live casino basically, which is blackjack, roulette. The thing is, when you're younger, money has a way bigger value to you. After you finish school, you really need way more money to bet to get the same rush. Let's say I'm betting $20 when I was 15, I would now need to bet three, four hundred dollars. Now that I start working, I have a, I have an actual income. I'm now I'm spending a lot more on gambling. Like I'm going, you know, oh, I just got my paycheck. Now I'm gonna put in four hundred dollars. I just had this one day where I was still like stressed and anxious, thinking like, oh my god, I'm broke. Basically, I was just like, holy shit, I'm actually broke. The most money that I lost on one night was maybe five, six, seven. Okay, I uh, lay down in my bed and. <laughs> was thinking what the f did I uh, done right now and then I said to myself uh, yeah I think I'm addicted when I've put the 10k uh, when I lost them I was shaking so bad I left my computer and I came back the, the next day because I, I didn't want to see if I lose or win the next day when I saw I lost for me it was a dream like I, I, I can go to casinos a uh, real life casino but nah, it's not the same I grew up with the idea that if you have nice kids People will notice it and they will say nice things to you. I almost got kicked out of my parents' house because uh, I'm not proud to say that, but I stole some credit cards from them. CSGO rolls actually nah. said are the most success on huh? only. What? That makes you kind of aware every time I talk like somebody's inventory. <laughs> Wait, what? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Sorry. Lost about $30,000. At that point, man, yo, I gotta stop it. I just like, I just block. I one of my router settings. I blocked every single gambling site. So yo, f this, bro. I actually do sometimes gamble still, but it's sports betting on real sports websites. You know, I have in my most formative years built up a habit and uh, and formed some not, uh, let's say, less than beneficial uh, neural pathways. Also, among the disturbing things pointed out to us by these sources was that because skin betting is a new and poorly understood frontier of gambling, it was that much harder for these people to get support from society or their family. And for some, that was even part of the appeal. 
and I like told my parents about it and everything. I, like, I think they kind of didn't really understand, like, to the extent of it. You don't want to tell people that like you're just wrapped up in it, especially once you get into the details and it's like peripherally related to like a video game for kids. I know for a fact my, you know, my mum didn't understand really what's going on here. Just okay, you know, games, cool, whatever. Um, but if she knew that I'm spending real money to earn real money through gambling, she'd obviously be concerned. But parents don't know that because that's an intricate part of the game. That's also... Same. Sometimes I remember I told my mom like that I just made like, let's say, a hundred bucks on a trade or whatever. And she was like, but it's, it's, it's in game, <laughs> right? It's not real money, is it? <laughs> and it was so unfathomable. <laughs> just for like making a trade. Part of, I think, the reason why it was so popular. Now she gets it. Uh, and the, and so prevalent. No, how you know? How would parents monitor it? They they wouldn't know. Now that idea you just heard from these people that getting involved in skin betting from a young age seeded something in them that hasn't gone away as they grew older. Within the scientific community, psychologists face a growing body of evidence that people who gamble while their brain is still developing, which happens all the way up to the age of twenty five, by the way, are significantly more likely to develop problem gambling later in life. People Make Games spoke about this to Dr. Serena King, a psychologist who's recently been studying the fields of both skin betting and video games with manipulative monetization. It's quite obvious to those of us who've been doing gambling work for a long, long time in terms of casino behavioral economics that like, this is the same methodology, if not flashier. And so with behavioral addictions like gambling or gaming, when you have those you know, intermittent reinforcements like loot boxes, you're constantly hitting the brain with dopamine. And the more you do that, the more people want you know, and crave it, need it to have stability in their mood. So I think that laying that foundation at a vulnerable time for addictive behaviors, which we know adolescence and young adulthood is, is critical for creating addictive potential. Now, while Counter-Strike Global Offensive is the tentpole of today's skin betting industry, we just want to flag here that this is not a problem that's unique to CSGO. This can happen to any game that uses the Steam inventory and uses collectibles, like Rust, yeah. which today is developing its very own symbiotic betting industry. One example of which you can see at howl.gg, but you'll find more if you Google them. We should also mention here that this isn't a problem that's totally oh, aware to Steam. This is the new sponsor of everyone now, Clash.gg. RBXflip.com is a website that allows Roblox users to gamble. I thought they were new. I didn't even know that they're around for four months. With now they're like sponsoring everybody. Bets. But Roblox's betting scene hasn't yet reached the scale of the sprawling network of businesses that facilitate Steam gambling. And seemingly one big reason that is, is that Roblox Corporation is way more proactive about going after them. That leaves us with one big question. Why hasn't Valve taken these sites down? Well, we got in touch with some ex-Valve members of staff oh, who spoke no. to us on condition of anonymity. Okay, I think this will piss me the f off, bro. If it's because of money, which she probably, which she already mentioned at the beginning, bro, jeez, uh, bro. This will make me annoyed, I think. Name a team, so their quotes will be read out by a voice actor, hires by People Make Games. It's a very libertarian place. Valve doesn't want to say what can and can't happen on Steam. Another cultural foundation of Valve is a desire to have things be as open and accessible as possible. It's a chaotic, neutral company. They do everything they can to stay as neutral as they can, no matter what. But according to the people that we spoke to, Valve's philosophy hasn't just made them less interested in fixing these sites. Apparently, it's made them less able to do so. The main entry point to all of this is Steam's Open ID. So one of the things we could do is create an allow list, but good. then we would need to create a process for people to apply, and then we need to create a process by which someone has to approve and validate those. And it's a bunch of hard to automate work, which is against the Valve ethos. The Cardinal Sin at oh Valve is that you oh, can't- Okay, they're lazy. Okay, not lazy, but the- uh. Uh, they they are a small team, but um, this oh, what a man. Not make work for other people who didn't agree to it. If you get the right people in a room together and everyone agrees on the work, then that's okay. But it's nobody's job at Valve to get those people in the same room. Valve doesn't hire for positions. They don't say this is an ongoing problem that we need to hire people to take care of. The way Valve works is here's this thing that we need to take care of this week. Who's gonna do it? 
Or here's another quote from the semi-professional Counter-Strike player we spoke to. They are so hands-off. It's like expecting an alcoholic to stop being an alcoholic, you know, or an abusive parent to actually suddenly step up. Nobody kind of expects anything of Valve. Is that a good thing? Probably not. So that's how we get to where we are today. With all of these sites still up and Valve's management acting like this simply isn't their problem to solve. Well, here's my pitch as to why these sites are Valve's problems to solve and why the company's disinterest in solving them should be a source of shame for the people who work there. So first off, as should be abundantly clear from the interviews that you just listened to, these sites are hurting Valve's customers and in some cases, ruining lives. True. But also, as convenient as it would be for Valve if these sites truly did exist outside of Steam's ecosystem, I believe in allowing these sites to exist, Valve is generating more revenue for themselves. And I'm not the only person who believes that. Here's another quote from an ex-Valve Stop. They exist because they help Valve ultimately. The more websites that exist, where players can use features that aren't available in the game itself, the more it benefits Valve. There are so many pros to keeping them around. Oh Think of it God. like this. We've got Steam over here and the betting sites over here on different websites and both industries claim no relationship with the other. But to start with, the culture of skin betting is for many people a feature of Valve's games as advertised by YouTubers and streamers and virally by your friends who are gambling. Valve is going to be acquiring more visibility and players for its games from anyone who finds this extra functionality appealing. Valve is also going to get more people playing its games simply in order to acquire skins that they can then bet. Then if you win skins in your casino, the people we spoke to always wanted to take them back to Valve's games to play with and to show off in front of other players. And if gambling ultimately becomes your hobby or a compulsion or an addiction or- Yeah. Hobby. All the skins you're betting are ultimately- <laughs> That's <so funny. laughs> Hobby. No. From Valve. A thought I heard from almost all of the gamblers I spoke to was that Valve can't shut down these casinos permanently because that would wreck the market value of skins. No. Hurting every Nine. I don't think that makes sense. There would be a dip, sure. I don't think so, bro. You're crazy. Are you serious? I don't think so. Everything would go down a little bit, yes. Nine, bro. Maybe I'm clueless, I don't know. Every player who owns any Valve skins. But to me, that just sounds like evidence that one big reason Valve skins are so valuable and why people want them so bad is Valve allowing the betting sites to exist. Or let's make this even simpler. Just imagine you sell tiny paintings and then someone opens a casino down the street where instead of chips, people gamble with your paintings. What do you think that's gonna do to how many paintings you sell? Mm -hmm. Or people's relationship yeah, true, to your true. paintings? Of course, in true, that- True, true, true. But then like, sure, if, if there may be some benefit to it, to the whole economy, it could as well, like I think it's fair to assume as well that it could as well be its downfall, no? Because it is so closely connected to CSGO. All of the sites are called connect, like even CSGO in the name, everything like, and it's all CSGO skins, CSGO, CSGO. And it is all, like a lot of the audience is it's gambling that could as well resolve in even tighter regulations, right? 100%. And they are trying, like, even if Valve likes it, yes, if it is beneficiary to them, they are still at least, I think they are still to this day banning bots here and there. But of course, now you have API trading and it uh, doesn't, like, they don't do anything or can't do anything. I think at least that's the case. Because now, you know, the people that cash out on those gambling sites, they just buy something off other people with the API uh, thingy, you know, or just off a marketplace using API. They don't have any more like $100,000 on bots, you know, like they used to. You can ban IP addresses, blocks it entirely. Yeah, but there was all, there would always be a way around it, no? It's just, it's a cat and mouse game, bro. Like uh, you're always gonna be, it's always gonna be much, much tougher to be the one um, trying to find a fix. Like the guys running away, they will always find a fix. Analogy, you could argue that the painter is blameless. But in Valve's case, and what is particularly damning, is that Valve's own loot boxes act as a gateway drug to more full-throated gambling. Valve's loot boxes already ask players to bet money for a random chance of getting a skin they like or maybe getting a cash prize. But if those players don't then like the skins they get, 
These casinos offer them the option to cash those skins in for another random chance of getting a skin they like. And in fact, and this looks so bad for Valve, today the most popular skin betting websites for CSGO have moved past coin flips and roulette and simply repurpose Valve's own loot boxes as casino games. You simply go from opening Valve's cases in their games to opening other people's cases on these casino sites, where you can open more cases and do so faster and with a wager that you yourself set. The whole thing would be funny if it wasn't so depressing. You've got these betting websites realizing they can better access Valve's customers by letting them bet Valve's skins in mm. games of chance modeled after Valve's own games of chance, all of which is enabled through Valve's API. And then you've got Valve going, yeah, I just don't know if this is anything to do with us. But of course, one reason I wouldn't want to address this problem if I was Valve is I wouldn't want people looking critically at these casinos because I think that would mean more people seeing my loot boxes for what they really are which is so uncomfortably close to gambling that the video games industry should already be calling me out. Like, what really is the difference between popping open a case in one of Valve's- I'm there trying to <laughs> before when the pixel clip pops up, oh. Valve's clients and popping open a case on one of these I mean casinos, even though one is supposedly a prestigious video game and the other is a casino that exists in a legal gray area. Honestly, I, I think the, the Valve, the skin boxes, they, they're like the same as the- the casino websites. And further eroding any distance Valve might have from betting websites. While Peep My Games was working on this video, Valve took the unprecedented step of announcing that The International, their big official Dota 2 World Championships, which they shove in the face of every player GG via bad, the Steam right? interface, would this year be sponsored by the website gg.pet. Dota 2 is a game rated for all ages where plenty of the top esports athletes are teens and Valve have taken a paycheck to advertise gambling to them. The best thing you can say about Valve's behavior is that it doesn't seem to be breaking any laws, a fact which also came up during a class action against Valve. In recent years, a bunch of parents of kids who had gambled on these betting websites took Valve to court only to ultimately have the case dismissed because in the United States, loot boxes are not considered gambling. But here we arrive at the reason that I think it is in the entire games industry's interest to call Valve out for how they're behaving. Because in certain areas, like age ratings, for example, the games industry has been able to largely regulate itself. And I just don't know if the industry is being similarly responsible when it comes to gambling. People Make Games spoke to Ryan Morrison, who stars himself as the video game attorney, to speak about this increasing overlap between the video games industry and the betting industry. There is going to be a day or a time where people realize how many kids are getting systematically tricked into being addicted to gambling. They're, they're, if you don't think these companies are A-B testing the different kinds of loot boxes and looking at your, your shopping profile as a user and knowing if you're going to spend more or less if you win or lose and figuring all of that out to put it into the, the right endorphin rush of uh, you won this time so keep going next time. That's all happening, and it, it's going to get worse and worse and worse every year as as at how these kids are targeted. And it's not always kids. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're pretty good at doing it to adults too. I, I don't want to make this just where's the you know help the children. It's a problem across all age groups. Um, but the the reality is, it's 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 just never gotten the attention that I, I would have thought it would after 2016 and and beyond. But while Ryan told us that he found Val's behavior regarding skins shocking, he also felt this was just one part of a larger conversation about loot boxes that the industry isn't having. I have had companies come to me of, of significant size come to me and ask for consultations on how to make sure what they're doing with loot boxes is legal. And one of the things they're doing is what is called dynamic odds, meaning if you don't spend money, you're going to win all the time. And why is that? It's huh? because you are now walking around in game as a billboard to everyone else who wants that cool skin you're wearing. So they'll give it to you because you're not going to spend money anyway. But what? if you're someone who they know will spend a hundred dollars until they keep spending until they get what they want, your your odds of winning are going to lower, lower, lower because they know you'll spend more and more and more. That is literally rigging a system that it goes against every gambling regulation. It goes against every basic law in this space. And it's it's happening in at least a few companies because they've gone over it with me. I can't say who because of attorney client, but it is, it's a legitimate issue. And I guarantee if these handful are doing it, many are doing it. I think the reality is that the industry is doing something it knows is wrong. 
Uh, when I go into the industry meetings, when I go into the, the rooms of lawyers... Said, what did he say? I didn't get that, bro. Sorry, bro. Sorry. I, I, it's, it's, it's just never gotten the attention of a larger conversation. Significant size could come to me and ask for consultations on how to make sure what they're doing with loot boxes is legal. And one of the things they're doing is what is called dynamic odds, meaning if you don't spend money, you're going to win all the time. And why is that? It's huh? because you are now walking around in game as a billboard to everyone else who wants that cool skin you're wearing. So they'll give it to you because you're not going to spend money anyway. But if you're someone who they know will that, I don't get it. Does the current game have that? I don't know what that means. If you, the more money you spend, the loss, less odds you get of, uh, the less odds you have of gets, getting something good. I don't get it. To protect their users or why? Okay, okay, I get it. Mm -mm. Spend a hundred dollars until they keep spending until they get what they want. Your look, your odds of winning are going to lower, lower, lower. I get it because they know you'll spend more and more and more. That is literally rigging a system that it goes against. What? No, to make to make it like to to siphon them, right? To siphon them out of money, the whales or what? But that's illegal, isn't it? Every gambling regulation it goes against. I every agree. basic law in this space and it's it's happening in at least a few companies because they've gone over it with me i can't say who because of a oh. but it is wait but not see us right <laughs> hey yo my my gold luck has been kind of uh uh low lately not gonna lie not gonna lie the more yeah 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 back in the guys uh oh there are normally theory New account, better case luck. Bro, when that video got released, so many people sent clips like, hey, new account, I just got this, just got that. Imagine. Mm -mm. Issue, and I guarantee if these handful are doing it, many are doing it. I think the reality is that the industry is doing something it knows is wrong. Uh, when I go into the industry meetings, when I go into the, the rooms of lawyers or the rooms of publishers, you know, industry insiders or confidential rooms and everything else, it feels like I'm sitting in the 1970s rooms with the tobacco companies explaining to each other why tobacco doesn't, smoking can't cause cancer. Uh, that's what what I am hearing when they go over their studies of how loot boxes can't cause kids to get addicted to gambling or can't be triggering any kind of endorphin rush that's creative, uh, creating addictive tendencies. People in my games reached out to Valve for a comment on their story, asking, Given that in 2016, Valve sent out dozens of cease and desist orders to skin betting sites, why does the company allow them to continue operating Good question. today? The total removal of skin betting websites would arguably crash the value of Counter-Strike Global Offensive's skins. Is that something that Valve is concerned about? Is Valve aware that many of the Steam users gambling on these skin betting sites are too young to- I'm wondering, hmm. We got the seven trade cooldown to f up gambling sites. Now they circumvented it and now we just don't do anything. I don't know. To legally gamble in their countries. Does Valve consider it acceptable that for the people we spoke to, Counter-Strike Go has acted as a gateway to problem gambling? Valve did not respond to us. But who knows? Maybe this video coming out and the response to it will of course some people at Valve to have a long overdue conversation about this whole situation. You think? Thank you so much for watching everybody and don't forget this was just part one of People Make Games two part report into Valve. Wow. The next video that this channel releases is going to be an extensive report informed by dozens of interviews about how Valve operate because let me tell you it's fascinating. Uh, so if you'd like to stay informed about that when it comes out, please respectfully press that subscribe button and YouTube what a will video, more or less bro. do the rest. And if you'd like to support the How did we work that we do, you can do that at patreon.com slash people make games and we really, really appreciate it because funding this work is quite important. How did we not watch that yet? Seriously, it takes so long to investigate anything. I'd have never taken this job if I'd known how long it took. <laughs> my goodness. But if you'd like to turn my bad decision of accepting this job into a good one, again, you can help that along by supporting us on patreon.com slash people make games. And thank you again for watching. What a video, man.